Hi Taurus, so I hope that you are doing well. This is a general reading for any sun, moon, or rising Taurus. We'll see the big ideas or awareness for the week. We'll get some guidance, look at possible outcomes, and we'll get additional information from the Oracle cards. So let's just go ahead and get started with your reading. So we have the Knight of Pentacles to begin as an awareness of the week. So the Knight of Pentacles is a hard worker, someone who's devoted and who is very careful in getting the job done and is invested in getting uh, projects, things to do. It's, it's, he or she is very, very aware and planning and practical in order to make things successful, in order to reach goals. You can see this knight is just sitting on the horse, holding the pentacle, and is looking downfield at maybe everything that's growing. He's thinking about how to build greater foundations, how to have more coins, how to improve resources. He's going to work hard. It's going to study. It's going to be reliable and steadfast. So the energy that's coming through for you is this very, um, again, stable energy, very grounded, pragmatic energy, slow moving, taking your time, doing your best work in order to reach your goals. You know that ultimately you'll get there. May not be as quick as everybody else, but it will, it will be a job well done. Whatever is your focus for the week, it is a gentle reminder to, to work smart and to put in the time and the energy and the focus and the lack of distractions in getting it done. So while you're plodding along, getting things done, here's the Six of Cups. And the Six of Cups is... A, it's a card of gentleness. It's a card of kindness. You see the older child giving the younger child a cup filled with flowers. A random but beautiful moment. And so this is a card where it's a nice reminder to be gentle and to be considerate and to be kind to others. That just like a child would be sweet and would pluck maybe a flower to give to a parent, here's this energy to say it's okay to be gentle and to be good. You know, there doesn't have to be a reason to do so, just do so. Another part of this Six of Cups is sometimes we think back on old times. We may find comfort in our memories. We might find comfort in nostalgia. We might use it as a reference point so that you remember, well, when I lived back there, I was really happy. What am I missing now that I had been. So you can use it to inform yourself and to give yourself uh, information. And it could also suggest that maybe you're meeting up with someone from your past. It could be a lunch date. It could be driving through an old town, an old professor. Uh, you run across a picture from a yearbook or something and it brings back fond memories. But there's a sense of accessing nostalgia here that's not, not harmful that is sweet and kind and it's in a loving fashion. The thing to think about, however, is not to get stuck in living in the past and not moving out from that. You have to acknowledge the past, you have to put it in its place, remember it for fond memories, and then keep living. Keep living, don't let your past stall your progress. Okay, so interestingly, the Knight of Pentacles, here we get to the King of Pentacles. And the King of Pentacles is the master of his material world. He has built a world of comfort, of fine things. He's a hard worker. He's fair, just, kind, smart, particularly smart when it comes to 
keeping a dollar and growing a dollar and taking care of property. So this is a focus for you, perhaps on your finances, on your career, on things related to income, investments. Maybe it's a good week to touch base with your advisors. Maybe it's a good week to look at your budget, see how you can work on things. Uh, but the King of Pentacles is someone who is successful when it comes to money and business, you know, just generally speaking, he knows how to make it work and he enjoys what he has. He has a lot. He's kind of smothered in grapes and greenery here and his pentacle. So he has a fine life and appreciates the comfort. Maybe you're doing something to improve the comfort of your house. For some, maybe it's getting, you know, uh, a music system or something, something to bring beauty and, and comfort or joy within your, your environment where you live. And then in terms of guidance, we have the Two of Wands. And in the Two of Wands, we see this finely dressed man. He's holding the world in his hands. And that's really such a powerful thing to have the world in your hand and you're thinking, well, now what will I do? What am I going to pursue next? What path am I going to take? You can see the two wands here almost creating like a doorway or a portal. He's looking out over the vista and he's envisioning the next plan, the next piece, the next path. So with twos, we're often faced with decisions, decisions to make. He may have to think about if this plan affects the people that he loves, if it affects where he lives, if it's going to take him out of his typical environment. So these things for you, as you're thinking about, maybe you're thinking about your big picture and what you want to do next, and you've been planning and working hard and uh, trying to make things happen. And this is deciding about how you're going to move forward, where you're going to go. It's really up to you. You have the power to choose your passions and your enthusiasms. So we have two major arcana cards. I pack a powerful wallop here, the star. This is a card of really the balance between the spiritual self and the physical self. And you can see pouring the water here on land and, and within the pond. This woman is without her clothes. And this suggests that you're comfortable with who you are and where you are, and that you're open and that you're okay with being vulnerable. And that's a big part of growth as a person is to be comfortable in your own shoes. The star also literally looks to the stars and to the universe for guidance and follows the stars. The stars inspire us. They make us feel good. And so the star here is, comes in to tell you that even after tough times to not lose faith, to have optimism and belief in the future that everything's going to turn out okay. You have to believe this is really a card of mindset. It's less of doing things, but it's uh, always a nice idea to rest, to meditate, to think about what's going on in your life, and to believe, to believe that the universe has got your back and that they're looking out for you. To follow the stars. To trust the process and thereby, therefore, trust yourself. So right next to the star is the devil. If some more people without their clothes and, you know, this is making a mockery really of the lover's card. This is chain. This could be oppression. These are the things the devil does to us. He tries to get in our way. He tries to pull us down. He tries to introduce negativity and doubt and um, is okay with suffering. So, you know, the devil represents the things that we do that limit our progress, that 
keep us in a place where maybe we're not quite as successful or true to ourselves as we can be. And so the devil whispers in your ear, don't do that. Stop working so hard and just do something else. You know, go drink a few beers, whatever it may be. You know, the devil can represent substance abuse, um, sexual proclivities, all kinds of things. It's the actions and the behaviors that limit you because the devil is trying to rob your faith. It's trying to take your confidence and your belief to pull you into his side. So what's interesting is that these chains are loosely bound. You have to be ready to say, I'm done with this behavior. I'm going to move on. I'm going to take a step away from it. I feel, though, that with the star, the star is a pretty powerful card. It's, it's about faith and optimism. And you will need to hold on tightly to your faith in the universe, that the universe is looking out for you, and that ultimately good things happen when you believe, and to not allow the devil to gain a greater hold. If you can start to, to chip away at what the devil does with respect to your life, then you're in a position of healing and a position of allowing all the good things to come to you, the, the abundance, the all the hard work pays off. The vision, the big picture for you is to get a hold of the devil and put the devil in his place. Okay, let's see what we have for an affirmation for the week. This can be a meditation point. The Desert Prince, Survival, False Promises. So the Desert Prince here is armed and he has his line behind him, suggests courage, suggests that he will do what it takes to survive. Very interesting. Do what it takes to survive, to heal, to believe. And then the shadow side, the false promises. The false promises to me is what the devil's whispering in your ear. That represents false promises. So now let's see what we have in terms of spirit or emotional self. Relationships. Relationships are just mirror images of your own life, how you feel and treat yourself, as well as how you react and respond to different situations and people around you. Be aware that every relationship is an opportunity for soul growth. So your relationships embedded within how you treat people of kindness and consideration. Your relationship with yourself is important as well. You know, when you feel good about yourself, then it, it flows, the positive energy flows. But if you feel, you know, if you feel that you have some things to work on, then, uh, you know, it can, it just can, uh, can manifest itself in ways that maybe people might, might sense it, that you're in a challenging place. Everybody at their, a point in their life is in a challenging place because of the devils that we face. And so if we can focus on the good in our relationships, if we can focus, in, focus on being honest and being, again, kind and generous and loving, then that goes a long way. This is a card for love. Let's see what we have for love. Ownership. You acknowledge your misdeeds and accomplishments alike and learn to love them as all lessons, all as lessons. So it really is a sense of you're in charge of you and whatever you do, you have to own it. And, you know, there's no getting around it. And to play the blame game, you know, it doesn't serve if you are confident in what you do, you know, stand up for all the good things and then whoops, we all make mistakes. Acknowledge it and let it go. 
You know, we learn from mistakes. We learn from things that we wish we hadn't done. This is what I have for you for the week, and I hope that you found something helpful here with this reading. If you did, please subscribe, like, share, or comment. I hope you have a fantastic week, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.